Welcome to Beside the Burn for Monday the 4th of June. We're continuing our series in the book of Acts and we are again this week looking at Pentecost and seeing what has happened whenever the Holy Spirit came upon all the believers. As we were saying on Sunday, the main focus of this part of Peter's sermon is all about Jesus. The Holy Spirit has arrived But Peter wants people to look to Jesus and to see the significance of Jesus in their lives now that the Holy Spirit has come. So today we're going to be looking at verse 22 of Acts chapter 2. We're also going to uh, look at a few other verses that I didn't have time to mention on Sunday that just develop uh, the whole idea a little bit further and give us some more details. So in verse 22 we've Uh, We're being told that Jesus is a man and we're also uh, being reminded that Jesus is God. He's divine, that he is the one who performs miracles. And it's this um, dual um, characteristic of Jesus being man and God at the same time that the Holy Spirit's coming testifies to and shows us how important that is. So let's read Acts 2 verse 22. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. So here we have Peter standing up, speaking to the people. He's already led them through the prophet Joel and now he is about to go into the Psalms to show that Jesus is the one who brings life and Jesus is the one who has conquered death. And here he reminds us that Jesus is a man, that he's from Nazareth. Nazareth is a place that the people have seen, that they've heard of, that they know that Jesus has come from there. And you could go back to Nazareth. You could talk to the people in that town. There's nothing special about it, but they would be able to say, yes, we remember Jesus. He grew up here. We remember him uh, helping his father as a carpenter. We remember seeing him. And therefore, um, he's a man. But we've also got to remember that Jesus is divine and he has been accredited by God. There has been proof given by God. He's been given accreditation, as it were. He's been given, if you like, a certificate to say that God approves of him. And the way that that has come about is through the miracles, the miracles, the wonders and the signs that Jesus has performed among them. And this is key. These are not just miracles and wonders and signs that they have heard of, but Jesus has performed these things among them. They have seen him, or at least they know people who have seen Jesus, as you yourselves know. So there is proof here. This is not Peter standing up saying something new and ridiculous. There is proof about it all. Now, some of the verses that I didn't have time to share on Sunday. Um, Let's look at John 20, verses 28 to 29. And this comes as part of the story after the resurrection, when Jesus has appeared to the disciples. And then we have Thomas, who we often refer to as doubting, who wasn't there, didn't see Jesus, and doubted that he was truly alive, even though he had heard all his uh, fellow disciples say that Jesus was alive. But whenever Thomas sees Jesus, he immediately realises that he is risen from the dead, and that immediately gives Thomas the knowledge that this is God. So Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. And these two statements, Lord and God, show us that Thomas realised that Jesus was much more than a man. He had witnessed his death and his burial, but now he realised that he was alive. And then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And Jesus is pointing forward to us because we haven't seen Jesus 
and yet we are able to believe in him and there is a blessing that is connected with that, a blessing that is received through trusting in Jesus and accepting him as Lord and God, just as Thomas had done. Then there's more proof that Jesus is God. Uh, Luke chapter 24, we have Jesus ascending into heaven. And we see here that whenever Jesus ascended, the disciples and the apostles worshipped. And you can only worship God. So they were acknowledging that Jesus, as he left them, was God. And so they worshipped him. Reading Luke 24, verses 50 to 53. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is at the end of Luke's gospel, but it also leads us then into the beginning of the Acts. Jesus was taken up into heaven, the ascension, and they worshipped him. And then they followed his instructions where he told them to go back to Jerusalem. And there they stayed, they waited for the Holy Spirit to come and they were continually at the temple praising God, acknowledging that Jesus is the one to be worshipped and Jesus is the one who is God. So Peter here is reminding them, look, Jesus was a man, but he's also divine, he's also God. He is someone who is to be worshipped, he's somebody who is to be obeyed, he is someone that we are to follow, it's worth giving your life to him. And then just one final uh, verse that I want to share with you from Hebrews, Hebrews 4, uh, 14 to 15. And here the writer to the Hebrews is reminding us that Jesus is a high priest and that he is the son of God. But not only that, he was human in that he was tempted in every way, but he's without sin. And that is the key thing that we hold on to here. Jesus is human and divine. He's tempted just like us, but without sin. And that is crucial to our faith and crucial to our understanding of who Jesus is. That he never sinned. And because he has no sin, he is able to die for our sins. Let's read Hebrews 4, 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. What a wonderful saviour we have. And on this day of Pentecost, as the Holy Spirit has come, Peter wants people to realise who Jesus is. Peter wants them to come to Jesus and accept his forgiveness and trust in him. Peter wants them to come before Jesus and worship him and glorify him. And so everything that Peter does on that day as the Holy Spirit comes and they speak in these different languages, everything is done to bring people to Jesus. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus and we pray that we might accept Jesus every day of our lives. Help us, Lord, we pray to trust in Jesus, to obey Jesus, to follow Jesus. Help us to put Jesus first in our lives, that he might be the most important in our lives. And that in all that we do, Jesus would be lifted high, that he would be worshipped, that he would be glorified. Amen.